in 2010, I was back at Pearl Harbor with about 100 or so of my fellow survivors. I think most all of them had been there a number of times. For me, that was the first time back to Pearl Harbor in 64 years. After the memorial ceremony that morning and rededication of the rebuilt visitor center, I got on one of those white boats, went out to the Arizona Memorial. First time I'd seen it, surely the first time I'd been aboard. Standing there on the deck of that memorial, look over the side at the hull of that vessel resting there on the bottom of the harbor, then all those names listed there on the honor wall, and realize that those are the names of 1,177 crew members whose earthly remains are still down there, still aboard that vessel. It was a lot different than when I saw it blow up that day, burn for days afterwards, sunk there on the bottom of the harbor every time I came in and out of the harbor during the rest of the war. Uh, the following day, in the accompaniment of a naval historian, which had been arranged months in advance, we were able to go back onto Ford Island to some of the highly restricted areas. On the way there, we passed by the USS Utah Memorial, pay our honor, respect, and remembrance to those crew members still aboard that vessel. And then around to the harbor inlet end of the island where the old PBY patrol, Catalina patrol flying boats were stationed. And I got once again to stand on the very spot where that first bomb fell. You know, uh, for a moment there, it seemed almost like the whole thing was happening all over again. You know, the sounds of bombs, of airplanes burning, the ships exploding, capsizing, sinking. Uh, the, you know, I, I could feel, I could almost feel the recoil of that machine gun and smell the gunpowder. Anyway, we went then, I was able to go back into Building 54. I wanted to get into that upper level office because somewhere there that morning, I lost that naive 17-year-old sailor boy. You know, I went to my duty station that morning, according to the record, I was a 17-year-old sailor boy. But I think by the time that day was over, I was more like a 34-year-old combat vet. Boy, I'll tell you, something like that can take your youth away from you real, real quick. <laughs> anyway, when we come out of there, come around the end of the hangar, I was able to point out to my dear sweet wife uh, what we, the window pane where that it went through, uh, the stuff that got to the back of me. She said, I only have five minutes left, is that right? We better end it about there. Anyway, uh, I, you know, I never heard another thing about being put on report. Although he <laughs> called me one day, when he saw that I had that stuff about the second or third day, he said to me, have you, what happened to you? I told him, well, I, you know, I got that Mom fragments up. He said, have you been to the sick bay? Have you been to the hospital? I said, no, sir. They're far too busy taking care of people. Far more seriously injured than I am. Uh, I'm a farm boy. We just got to lick our wounds and go on. I'll be all right. He said, you get your blankety blankety blank up to the sick bay right now. And don't you disobey this order. He had me cold right there. But I never again heard another thing about that. Anyway, when we got home, my dear sweet wife said to me, what was it like to go back there after all this time? And well, it was a lot different, you know. Uh, I think that I was very lucky there that day, even though I was only 17 years old, seeing all that happening, all those ships exploding, uh, capsizing, sinking, uh, those airplanes burning, the bodies floating in the water for days afterwards and stuff. I was able to accept all of that as the waste of war. But when I went back there now, it was a little deep. She said, you gotta write something down so that your kids, your family will know what happened to you at that time. So anyway, I, I, I started doing that and I'd be at the dinner table, I'd push the pen aside and jot something down, or I'd be out in my little shop working. I still work, by the way, uh, I'm only nine and one, why shouldn't I? You know, if I can do this until the 3rd of April of 2016, then on that day I will have been a working wage earning, tax paying, service providing, productive, contributing, and self-supporting member of my generation for 75 consecutive years. Try that on for size. <laughs> and I intend to keep on working. Anyway, I got that all together and I thought, I better see if I can make it into something that will make sense to somebody. Those of you, if you've been to Pearl Harbor, see if it reminds you of what you saw and felt while they were there. Those of you who have yet to go, it'll, it'll prepare you for what you saw. And I call it a tour of remembrance. From within those resting hulls of sunken ships, reminders of what used to be, echo calls to remember from those there entombed that freedom is never free. 
for those who answer duty's call in the air, on land, or at sea, where liberties and freedoms come under threat, that's where they choose to be. They all gave some, some gave all those liberties and freedoms to save, but those valued treasures can only remain if protected by the gallant and the brave. The bombs blast, the cannons roar, the sights and sounds of battle, the cries of the wounded, the sighs of the dying, amid bursts of machine gun rattle. The fires flames, the burning airplanes, the sight of sunken ships with death raining from the skies right before eyes. How could we ever forget? Some man guns put up a fight, a victory hope to gain. They stood their ground, then many with their ships went down, and down there they shall forever remain. Those shipmates and buddies, forever their loss, never to breathe air again, must always be honored and forever remembered, or their sacrifices will have been in vain. Some saw it all, got involved, each in his own way, and for those who did and still survive, it's like only yesterday. We've grown old, tried to move on, things we've tried to forget, but try as we will, those memories linger still, and for some, it's not over yet. Our seasons pass, the time draws near, the last survivors will have faded from sight. Then comes each following 7th of December, Will there always be those who will care enough not only to remember, but to remember and then go to the top of Mount Diablo on that night and light the light? Another few minutes if I can. I've got one request. I think I can speak for all of my fellow survivors, maybe all of World War II vets, most likely all vets, with this simple, simple request. When our journey here has ended, and you've laid us down to rest. Know that we've valued your love and your friendships. They've been the very best. Don't let sorrow cloud your pathways. Cheerfully greet each come and dawn, joyful for all that we have shared. Life must go on. Oh, don't send us loads of flowers or stand by our graves and cry. Come see us while we're living. Don't wait until we die, and some day in the great hereafter, who knows just where or when, we'll be missing you much, and we'll be waiting until we meet again. Thank you.
You must know that I like to work in the kitchen. <laughs> I'll give this a workout, I, I do for sure. <laughs>